So let's go through what the resentment circle model looks like. You could have seen the resentment circle model before, but if you've never practiced it or done it, you haven't seen it enough times. You see it, you do it, you see it again, you do it, you do it, you do it, you see it again. Let's take Fred. Fred is, a, is a, an employee in our company, in our make-believe world today, right? And Fred's upset. Fred is coming in today. He's got a bone to pick with me. There's some problem going on. Some problem going on. And, and he's pissed, right? So he walks in there today, right? Before I get into that room, I ask myself the question, what's my goal? What do I want to accomplish from this meeting? I don't know what his is yet, but I know what mine is. I'm asking, do I want to stay in relationship with Fred? Or do I want to use this time to coach and mentor him to quit? Or is it just going to be cut and dry, I apologize, and, and, and we just move on our separate ways? I'm making the decision first. Right? I'm deciding, am I working on staying married or am I working on being divorced? Okay? Fred comes in. Fred sits down. Right? I say, Fred, I would like to go through an exercise today. And this exercise today is an exercise where you're going to feel heard, where you're going to get every concern that you have out, and we're going to come up with a plan to resolve it. But before we do, i got to ask you two questions. Number one, Fred, what else is going on in your world? How are things at home? How are things with your wife? How are your kids? Are they healthy? Is your wife healthy? Are you healthy? How are your finances? Are you current on everything? Do you have anything else going on in your world? Right? How's your family? Is there anything else that we need to know about that's happening in his world? Because I'm not going to try to resolve Fred's problem if it's not actually our problem, it's something else, like a marital issue or something. Does that make sense? So the first thing I do is I clear it. No, Fred, nope, everything's good. I'm just pissed at you. Awesome, great. Fred, before we get started, uh, I want to ask you a question. Is, is your goal today to come up with a way to resolve this? Or are you coming in here just to let me know that, that we're going to part ways and, and there's nothing we can do about it. What do you want to accomplish today? And if he says, Ben, I've, I've already made my decision. I left. I signed a contract with somebody without reading it closely. And I'm going to somewhere else. I'll say, Fred, man, I want to apologize that it ended this way. And uh, I'll be here if you ever need anything. And I want to thank you for the time that you contributed to our company. I want to, I want to wish you just a good farewell, and my door's always open. Hug. Okay. See you later. I don't, I don't need to go through this exercise with somebody that just wants to come in here and poop in my kitchen and then leave me a mess to clean up. Right? I don't, I don't owe him any more time than he owes me. So at that situation, if he wants to be divorced... I'm going to say, great, see you later. That makes sense? What I'm really saying is, high five, get the heck out of here. Does that make sense? Because at that moment right there, he's decided that he's going to leave. And I could spend the next hour listening to his grievances, or I could go over to the next group and talk to them because they want to stay. And I could take that hour and give that hour to them and help them move forward. I might take a few minutes and reflect and say, what, what DNA do I have in Fred's, Fred's issue? Is this a bigger issue? Do I need to resolve that? Right? But then I'm going to go spend all my time and energy on them. They're, they want to stay. Okay, let's, let's just see how this goes. So, you set the stage. Fred, what I love about you is, is you're coming in here and, and you want to resolve some things and you want to move stuff forward. And what I want you to hear from me is that I'm going to listen. And I'm not going to say anything to what you're saying until you get every single thing out that you want to discuss. Okay? 
And what I do is I go up on the board or the flip chart and I draw a circle. And I draw a circle because I want to contain his issues individually. This is a container for Fred's concerns. And I'm not going to have this be filled with a whole bunch of things. I'm going to isolate each and every issue. So, Fred, let, let's pretend that you're a salesperson in our, in our real estate business. And you're coming in because you're upset about the split. And you're upset about other things that are happening in the team, right? So, do me a favor, Fred. W what's your biggest concern today? Tell, t tell me about what... what What's really going on? What? Well, I've been here, I've been with you for a year and a half and I'm working my ass off and you know, I'm doing well and this whole 50-50 thing is just not working out. So what you're saying is that you have a concern about the split, right. the, per the percentage that, that you get on every transaction. I do. Awesome. Fred, what I know is that, especially for such a fouled leader like me, and, and our, I know our business isn't perfect today, I know there's probably other things that are going on in your world. What other things are you frustrated about on the team or in the business today? Um, I think there's a couple agents in the office that I feel get more favoritism than I do. They seem like they get more leads than I am. Oh, so favoritism to you, right? Favorite to you means they get more leads. Not only do they get more leads, they get the better ones, the Glen Gary ones, so to speak. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way, and, and, and I'm excited that you're opening up and you're sharing that with me. What else? I think that's it at the end of the day. I mean, I want to see where this is going. I, can, I know that I can, when you're a model, i got to work hard and there'll be opportunities, but I've been here a year, a year and a half, and I feel like I'm doing above average with some of these other agents, and I just feel like I'm doing the same thing every day, and I don't know where this is going. So you said there wasn't any other issues, but what you just told me was one of your issues is actually that you don't see any opportunities, opportunities, right, coming, coming, your, coming your way, right, and you don't have a clear vision for, for where you see your role in our company going. What I found is there's usually more than that. So anything else with, with me, the staff, any, what else is really bothering you? That's, that's it for the most part. I, mean, I got a family to take care of, and I got to make sure that, that whatever I'm making here, I got to be able to net more and make more so I can actually do something with my life. So what you're saying is that you need to be able to net more, net more, right? And you, and you got to take care of your you got to take care of your family financially, is what I hear you saying. The cost is going up with my family. My kids are growing. They're eating more, right? Oh. Like, the price points aren't going higher. Maybe I can sell some more houses, but is that really going to get me where I want to go in the next five or ten years? What you're saying is your personal costs, your lifestyle, are going up. Yeah, it is. Didn't, didn't, I see the, didn't I see that you just bought a new car? It looks, it looks nice. What would you get? You got a Tesla. Well, that's amazing. That's cool. I've always wanted to buy one of those. So you got a Tesla. Uh, did, did, you, did you buy a new house? I did. You did. Did you rent out your old one or you sell your old one? I sold the old one. You sold your other one and then you bought a new house. Was it more expensive? Yes, it was. Okay. You got a new house too. Wow. Congratulations. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Anything else going on? Right, your, your family, your family's stressing a little bit, right? Yeah. My wife's giving me some pressure too. So we got, we got our, we got our moment. Your wife, you got some pressure from the wife, and, and is she saying, hey, I need more money, I need more money, I need more money, right, or, or, or what is she really saying? She wants to see where this is going. I mean, she's, she's hammering me on, on looking at other opportunities with other teams or other companies and brokerages, some better splits and opportunities, so she wants me to see if I can make more somewhere else. So our kids are taking care of, our family's taking care of. Okay, okay. She, she thinks that maybe you should explore other opportunities and look at other things, right? How does that make you feel? Like I'm doing the wrong thing with you right now, and that maybe there are better opportunities out there. Okay, okay. I'm not enough at times. Oh. I feel like I'm working my ass off. Whoa, whoa, I just heard you say something. You said that you don't feel like you're not enough. Like, like, like you don't feel like I value you? Is that what you're saying? I don't think that between me and you, you don't value me. I just feel like my wife at this point 
her comments and her criticism and her pressure makes me feel like I'm not enough in what I'm doing every single day. Oh, well, so your wife's making you feel like you aren't enough because of what's happening financially in the world. Just out of curiosity, have I ever made you feel that way? We've had our debates and some back and forth stuff over the past year and a half, but I've apologized, you've apologized, we've moved on, nothing crazy. All right, so we've cleared all those, all those previous things out. No beef between me and Okay, so we feel like we've, we've completely, completely resolved this. Right, this is that, all the concerns. Let me ask you a question. If I was able to resolve each one of these issues, right, to the best of my ability, right, and you felt like you were making more money and, and you had a clear vision of what your opportunities were and, and you got the Glencarry, the best leads that were out there and you had the, you know, the split, the finances, the things, right, and your wife was, was, was not giving you that pressure, would we move forward as partners? Yes. We would? All right, and, and at the end of the day, that's what you want to happen, right? Okay. I drag the stuff out of him. I sit there in silence until he starts speaking. I put my pen in the circle and I wait for him to talk, right? He could have stopped right there if you don't take the time, and I go out there and I resolve and get all these things out. Everybody with me? Okay. Next thing I do, Fred, I super appreciate you being open and transparent and telling me your concerns. And it means a lot to me that you would come sit down with me and try to resolve it instead of just packing up in the middle of the night and, and leaving, right? And I know that we've only worked together for a year and a half, but that time's been valuable to me personally, and I appreciate the contributions you've made to the business. First and foremost, what I'd like to do, since I let you speak a little bit about some of the things that you're concerned about, could I share with you some things that have been bugging me? Is that okay? And what happens is since I didn't object to anything that he said, he never got defensive. I only listened, right? And since I didn't object and I didn't talk over him, he now owes me the same exact duty. Does that make sense? So then what, then what we do is I say, Fred, Fred, I want to go through, through a couple of mine. Remember about a year and a half ago when you joined the company? I had the honor of sitting down with you and, and we went through our business model and we went through our contract and we went through our agreement and there was a piece of paper that you signed and it's called the commitments. And I brought it with us today just to, just to refer back to. And you went through each one of those commitments and you initialed it. Yeah. Right? Do you remember that? Yep. In those commitments, right, as I read it over today and I want to go through it with you today, I feel like on every single transaction, I gave you the amount of money that, that, that we agreed in the contract. My admin did the work that I told you they would do. I bought the sign in the lockbox. I did the virtual tour, right? I hired the marketing manager <laughs> to go do all this marketing stuff. You know, I, I did everything that I think that, that, that I said I was gonna do. But when I look through this list, I see a couple of commitments that it, it doesn't appear that, that you're still sticking to. Would it be okay if I went through them? Sure. You said, you said every day that, that you would be willing to show up to our morning huddle. It starts at 8.30. We also call that scripts, Fred. And we, we, we take attendance. So what I did is I just went through and I looked. On average, you've been coming one time per week for the last three to six months. And, and in, the, in the agreement that we did, you had said that you would come a minimum of four days a week and you would communicate with us in advance which day you're going to take off that week. Does that make sense? Fair enough. And one of the things that my partner, Jolene, does is she hands out leads to the people that show up in the morning because we know they're working. And when they show up in the morning and we know they're working, we know that they can answer the call or they can answer the lead or they can email those back. But when we don't see you, what happens is we don't know if it's a day off, if you're sick, right? Because you had made a commitment that you were going to come in every morning at 
that might give a little bit of explanation why maybe it feels like Shea gets a couple more leads than, than you. Is that, is, that, is that a valid concern? Is that true? I could be wrong on my attendance sheet, but... You're not wrong. It, just, it makes perfect sense. I just, you know, I'm, I'm committed to my wife, and I'm going to take the kids to school four days a week, and that's... So now that we're talking about this, I don't know what to do because I know that's important, but that's also very important to me. Okay, it, it makes sense. Did you, did you know that you had kids when, when you signed this commitment? You, you did. You did. Okay, so we'll, we'll revis re revisit that in a second. I'm a flexible person, right? And I, and I definitely believe that the exception will deserve exceptions. And if, if bringing your kids to school is something you value, then I, I want to come up with a way to win and for that to be a win for you, okay? But the next thing that you said in the agreement is you said that you would do two open houses every single week. So I just went over to Christina and I said, Christina, pull up all the open houses that my friend, my friend Fred's done in the last month. And, and what she said is, he hasn't, he hasn't done any. I said, well, what do you mean he didn't, didn't do any? Because he made a commitment to me that he'd do two every single week, and you're telling me that he did zero? Well, what about the month before? Well, he didn't do any in the, then either. No kidding. No kidding. What, what happened there? Just didn't, just, just didn't do them? You got some buyers, and okay. That makes sense. Okay, one of the other commitments that you made inside our on day one, is that you said that you would call 150 people per day. Per day. And, and you know I'm not a super big stickler on that, so I just went ahead, I just looked up the numbers. We use a dialer, right? We can see how many calls you make, that kind of stuff. You made 34 last month. <laughs> 34. And I know one of the things that Jolene does is she says, hey, when we have great leads coming in, we're going to give the leads that show up to Scripps, to the people that show up to Scripps, we're going to give the leads to the people that that uh, do the opens and the people that make the dials, but it doesn't look like you've been doing the dials either. What's been going on with that? I thought I was doing the dials, honestly. You, some, you, of the, some, you, some of those I make through my phone, too. Oh, some you, some you call through your phone. The, just, just pull it up. Let's see. How, how many did you call yesterday? Just, let's, just, let's just look at your cell phone. It said here that you did two yesterday on, on the thing, so I'm sure you called a lot on your phone. Just, let's just look at it. Just scroll through there. Add them up for me. How many did you do? Like 16 or 17. 16 or 17. I got two. You got 16. Two plus 16 is 18. Is that less or equal to 150? You, you, see, you see, see, the, see the discrepancy? You know what I want? Is, is I want you to make more money. Do you know why I want you to make more money? Well, that's a super big win right there. But, but more than anything, Fred, it's because I care about you. I care about you. I care about your wife. I care about your kids. Remember when you first got started and your car broke down and, and I was the one that wrote the check to, to fix your car? Right? Anybody else in your life ever written a check to fix your car on your first day of work? No. Did that tell you that I cared about you? Yeah. And, and you, you paid me back. I super appreciate that. And you started doing deals, right? But when we sat down the first time, we went through something that we call the opportunity model. And we talk about it at all of our classes and, and, and all of our trainings and our team meetings and so on. But could I revisit it real quick? Sure. It said that if you do one to two closings per month, you get to do what I call stay. <laughs> and I saw last month you did one closing, good, good, good job. And the month before you did two, high five, right? And the month before you did one. So you're, 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 you're right here. Okay. If... We also said in that opportunity model, if you did three to four deals per month, we would help you hire a showing assistant. And that showing assistant, right, they would go out and show those homes for you so that you could spend your time lead generating, doing buyer consults, or going on listing presentations. The reason I do that, and the reason we have this model, is because you can spend two hours with the buyer with a showing assistant, or you can spend 20 hours with the buyer if you do it yourself. And I know you're going to give up a little piece of the pay. About 15% goes to the showing agent. But, but your, your money per hour dramatically goes up. Two months ago, I closed three. What's that? Uh, two months ago, I closed three. Yeah, but you only did it one month. And we talked about this is per month on average, right? And you don't have to do it for an entire year. But as long as you're consistent and you have a pipeline to close, close right, I want you to succeed. What you'll see by this is not only do I care about how much money you make, I care about your income per hour. Do you think that if you went home next year and you sat down with your wife and said, hey, babe, I doubled my income, 
and I worked 50% of the hours, would she be happy with you or unhappy with you? She, she'd be happy, right? Sure. Just out of curiosity, how would she feel about me? A lot better than now. Which brings me up to my next one. What I found is when spouses have a problem with somebody's work, it means that my employee or my partner goes home and complains and vents and, and, and talks about our relationship at work, and they tend to only talk about it from their side, not both sides. Do you think that there's a chance that when you went home and you said, I can't believe Shay got all the good leads, right? And, and Ben didn't have time to meet with me today, right? When you went home and you said all those things, do you think that because she loves you and she married you that she's always going to take your side, but you might have not showed both sides of that equation? If you went home and said, hey, babe, Ben didn't give me time today and Shay got all the leads, but it's because I didn't show up for scripts and then I only made 16 calls, right, and I didn't do any opens, right, and I only have one pending. Do you, do you think she, she'd be defensive of me or you? Do you think she'd be kicking you in the butt? Well, she'd, she'd kick my ass for sure. She'd kick your ass. If she came to work with you for the last month and stood behind you and said nothing, would she be impressed or would she be depressed? She'd be depressed, yep. right? I want to resolve all your issues today. Okay. I want to be the word and I want to make sure that I'm always the word to you, but I need you to do it to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's look back at your issues real quick, okay? You're, you're a smart guy. You're a smart guy. Do you care about your split or do you care about your income per hour? Income per hour. Income per hour. And if I could help you get to a position where you're closing three, four, five, six a month, something like that, yep. and I could increase your hourly rate and you could work less hours, would you be okay with a split? Yep. You would. would. Would it be okay if I just cross this off for now? Sure. Okay, great. Now, I know, I know that we've... You said that you feel like well, there's favorites on the team and I give leads to Shea and, and other people. Do you understand why? I do. I got a couple of good leads today and out of good faith, I'm willing to give it to you. I'll just give you the best leads. I'll give you all the leads that we get today. Just out of good faith because I, I love you and I want you to get back on track. But I'm not going to do it again if you don't do those things that you committed to in the agreement. Does that make sense? Would it be okay if I cross that off? Okay. Now, you had talked about opportunity and vision. When you and I first met, you said, I could see myself running, running a team, a Ben Kinney team in, in the next Keller Williams office up the road, mm-hmm. right? I and I said, you know what, Fred? I could see you doing that too. I'll buy you the jacket, right? And you said, that'd be awesome. In that opportunity plan, I said, hey, you get three to four to do a showing agent. You get five to six. I'll pay for half of an admin for you. You get eight. You can get another half piece of leverage, showing agent, whatever. You get to 10, you get to be my partner. Is that even realistic? Oh, yeah. We have a, a Grandma Gail, first year in the business. She closed 79 transactions. She's 65 years old and has 44 grandkids. <laughs> she did it. She did 79. You're doing... You, okay, okay. All right, good. So I want the vision of you and me to be partners. I could say, what city would you partner with me? If you, if you wanted to go anywhere after today, where would you go? Spokane, Spokane, that's a great option. We don't have anybody there. That's amazing, right? Right? Let's get the logo made. Let's think about it. Let's dream on that. But I need to get you on a path to where you earn that because you need to be able to go over there and you need to say, here's the opportunity plan. I had to do it too. Everybody in our world's treated exactly the same, right? And if you get to 10, you can go to the next city, the Tri-Cities, and go do it there again if you want. I got to do it first or same before I can get anybody else on my team potentially to do it as well. Do you remember the leadership triangle when I said first thing we got to do is lead ourselves? Right. And the next thing you got to do is show that you can get other people productive? That's leading a showing agent, an admin, an ISA. And then after that, we grow leaders. I'm trying to get you to the third piece in the triangle, but you're not even willing to do the first one. Does that make sense? Is that an opportunity you'd still be interested in, or is it something you, you don't care about anymore? No. I, you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. I want you to do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's cross that off. You need to net more. You, you know what's funny? You have a newer car than me. You have a nicer house than me. Which one, just, just, I'm, not, I'm not pointing fingers, but which one of us makes more money? You do. I do. Why is it that you live a better lifestyle than me, and then you come to me, and you talk about your financial problems, right? By the way, what time did you leave work yesterday? 3.30. 3.30. I left at 9 p.m. 
I don't expect you to be me. I know you got kids and you got a family, but you have financial and net problems, but I left at nine and you left at three. I need you to be accountable and, and, and be the person that says, you know what? Right? I need to fix some of these things. So if you're willing to, what I'd be willing to do is I'm willing to sit down with you and or you and your wife, go through your finances, help you guys find things that you could get rid of, right? And help you guys get into a plan where you guys can live on less, save more, and get on track for retirement. If I did that with you and your wife, would she, would she appreciate me a little bit more than she does today? Definitely. Would you guys be open to being that transparent? Let me look at your finances, your credit. So, Okay, great. I would love to do that. So if that happened... And we could help get it so your personal expenses are less. And you're going to be doing more business because we've talked about all these things. We could cross this one off. Wow. Wow. And we talked a little bit about how when you went home and you vented about me, that she then became an advocate for you not working with me. Right? Yeah. And did you ever tell her that I was the one that fixed your car? Do you think that if you went home and, and every day you said, Works awesome. I did awesome. And these things are awesome that this person would now become your support, right? That you might have caused some of these things yourself. All right. I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cross that off. By the way, do you think if you were making more money, you had better personal income, your wife would think that you're enough? Yeah. Do you want to be a good husband? I feel I was enough. You do. I would feel I was enough. You would feel that you were enough. That's interesting, right? You feel like a better dad? Yeah, sure. Right, better husband? Yep. That's, a, that's awesome. Let's look at my list. Do you want to recommit today to these things? And before you say yes, if this isn't realistic, what if we started this week and you just committed to calling 50 people? I know 150 has been a stretch, and I don't want to move you from 16 to 150. What if we just tried 50? Right? Could you commit to that? I could. Okay. 50. Let's just start with that. Every day at the end of the day, I want you to text me how many you've called, what the results were, how many appointments you got. Okay. Right? How many buyers you have, how many <clears throat> lists. I'll send you a format. You just text it to me every single night. I can do that. Okay? I'm never going to ask you for it. You're always going to send it to me. I'll do it. Okay. Right. Is two open houses too much for you? Or you just haven't found... Do you want it... What's the option? The two things I'm battling with, dude, is I got the three kids, right? I got the 830 and the two open houses, and I got a bunch of activities, and I'm, I want to be a great dad. I want to be there for him, but I want to also provide a great life for him, so I'm really stuck. It's a balance, isn't it? Maybe you should just go get a job. Maybe you could get a job that paid less, but it gave you more of a fixed schedule so you could just work from 8 to 3. Is that an option? No. It's not. No. So what are the alternatives? for the getting the kids to school? What if we said two days a week that you could bring them? Could your wife do it for one or two, or could you have a nanny or somebody else, or your parents? What's our other option? I'll try to get my mom and my uh, in-laws involved. Okay, awesome. I can, yeah, I can back to school. All right. Can I have one day? Can I have one day? Yeah, well, what day do you want? Wednesday. Wednesday. So every Wednesday, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, Jelaine, we're never going to see you. We're never going to see you on Wednesdays, right? Because that's your day which means I'm not going to give you leads on Wednesday unless I can get a hold of you. But the rest of the days, right, I'll make sure you're taken care of. I All could right. probably do a Thursday or Friday night open house instead of a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I didn't say what day of the week. That's true. Yeah, you could do it during the week if you want. That's true. Right? You can bring your kids. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want. Okay. Right? Put them out in the seat in the monkey suit just dancing with the signs for the open house. That's fine. But I, could probably, I could probably do a, I could do a Thursday like a 2 to 5 and I could make calls during that time too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm still on board with this opportunity model if we can get you up to three to four. Maybe if we texted every single day and we met every couple of weeks that we could get you back on track to do this. Does that work? Wow. Sounds like you're actually willing to recommit. I feel a little better right now. You feel a little bit better? Do you feel hopeful that we can get this, this bus back on track and get you where you want to go? Man, it means so much to me that you would take the time to get together and talk through these scenarios and allow me to do the same. It's really rare. I'm going to recommit to you. You're going to recommit to me. We're going to go forward. Is that cool? Yep. All right, let's hug it out. Cool. Let's hug it out. How'd that feel for you? 
Bro, I was seriously attempting to be one of my agents. It felt freaking fantastic because I was pissed at you. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, it was very fair. Uh, I was able to. You helped me self discover my real problems and how the finger went back to me, and that where I've been dropping the ball on my on my commitments and how I've been letting my family down, and that the fact that you were able to be a little flexible to get me right back on track and providing me those opportunities and solutions and thinking uh, non tunnel vision got me more excited to recommit. And then I in a way to have more respect for you than I did before I walked in. If I had zero standards, as Julian would say, if it wasn't in writing, it doesn't work. Because what happens is you walk in there and they say, well, I feel, and the other person, well, I feel, right? We just go back to the agreement. Well, what do we agree to? Via said something to me the other day that she said, I, I don't even know if I notice it as much, but when you see it a couple times, you start picking up on it. She said, you always ask permission. Hey, would it be okay if, if Fred, if, if now I went through some of my concerns? Would it, what do you think if you, you know, I, I'm asking those questions and I'm asking permission. I don't need it in this relationship. I'm asking for it. It changes the tone of the conversation, right? right? And with me at the board right here with the pen, I'm also in control of the situation. I'm now the conductor. If you've ever read the book, The Six Thinking Hats, I'm conducting this. Mm -hmm.